Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs, and welcome to the first episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. This is a brand new series on my channel, which is going to be a tutorial series merged with a survival let's play. There are lots of different ways to play Minecraft, and today I'm going to teach you the way I like to play Minecraft. We're going to start a fresh new single player world together in Minecraft Java Edition version 1.13, which is the most recent update at the time of this recording, it's only just come out, and it's also called the Update aquatic. Now as you might guess from the name and this lovely ocean view we're getting here, this update has changed a lot of things about the oceans in Minecraft. It's added a lot of new features, things like shipwrecks and coral reefs, turtles, sunken villages, even drowned zombies, and it's also changed a lot about how players can play the game, so I thought it was a great time to start a series like this. Now the Update Aquatic isn't just a Java edition thing, it's also arrived on the console, mobile and Windows 10 editions of Minecraft, so hopefully this guide should apply to whichever edition of Minecraft you're playing, and everyone, even if you're an experienced player, should be able to get something out of this series. Now in this first episode we're going to create our world, gather some early resources, craft our first tools, hopefully build or find a shelter where we can survive our first night, and maybe even do a bit of exploring before we wrap up for the day. Now we're going to go into the single player menu here and you'll notice there aren't any worlds already created so we're going to create a brand new one, we're going to name it survival guide like so, and we're going to keep it in survival game mode. Survival is kind of the core Minecraft experience, it's the one that I love the most. You go around scavenging for resources, you get to fight things, you get to mine for diamonds, you have health and hunger you have to watch out for, it's a fantastic time, I hope you guys enjoy it. The other two game modes that we can choose from this menu are Hardcore, which is the same as Survival but it's locked on the hardest difficulty and you only get one life, which means if you die, you die permanently and you have to delete the world. That's, that's basically the only thing you can do. You can still fly around and look at stuff for a while but then you can't respawn into the world. The other one is Creative, which you might have seen other people playing on. This is the one where you can just fly around and place blocks wherever you like. You get access to an unlimited array of blocks and you can destroy stuff instantly. We like Creative a great deal, but we're not going to be playing that. We're going to be playing Survival. This is a survival guide after all. The next thing we're going to do is go into More World Options and you'll notice I'm leaving the seed here blank. This is going to generate a random seed for us. It's a world that I have not seen before but I am going to show you guys the seed for the world. I'm going to type slash seed into the chat so you can see the seed pop up and I'm going to leave the seed in the description of this video as well. So if you go and type in the same number into the seed for the world generator box right here, you can play on the same world and you can play along with this series. One other thing I'm going to do while I'm here is click allow cheats and switch that on. Now I'm not going to be cheating to my own personal benefit, I'm not going to be like spawning in resources for myself and stuff like that, but a little bit further down the line I want to do an episode on commands and maybe command blocks as well so that you guys can get an idea of how those work, how they can enhance your survival experience or maybe give you a bit of experience if you're going to be an admin for a server, that kind of thing. So we're going to allow cheats to be on right from the beginning just so I don't have to fiddle around with that later. Hope that's okay with you guys. We're going to click done and the last thing we can do is click create new world. So this is it folks, this is going to be our world for the Minecraft survival guide. I'll see you on the other side. All right, folks, so here we are in our Minecraft world. I like the look of this already. It's got plenty of trees around, plenty of stuff we can do. Fantastic. Nice big mountains all around us. It looks like Minecraft, doesn't it? That blocky terrain never gets old. So welcome to the world for the Minecraft Survival Guide. We have a few objectives right off the bat here. As you can see, the sun is rising over those mountains over there and it's going to progress across the sky until it becomes nighttime. And at night time, any dark areas over here on the surface can spawn monsters. So we need to be very, very careful and make sure that we have a shelter for the night. The first thing we need to do is grab some wood because wood is the essential material in Minecraft. If you have some wood with you, you can start from scratch no matter where you are. So it's very important to have wood right at the start here. We're going to grab, I think this tree will only give us four logs of oak wood. That's absolutely fine. That's more than enough to start us off here. I'm going to walk out into an open area. The leaves over here will start to disappear. And the first thing I'm going to do is press E to open up my inventory. Now what you see here 
is a two by two crafting interface. Now two by two is good, it will do what we want it to do for the moment, but what we really want is a three by three crafting interface so we can start making tools. So I'm gonna pick up the oak logs by left clicking, gonna place them in here one at a time by right clicking and grab myself four oak planks out of the out of the, the product slot over there. Now I'm going to click and drag those into a square right there and what that gives us is a crafting table. A crafting table will allow you to get a three by three interface if you place it down using the right click button like so. We're going to use that to break up our logs into planks once again and even break up some of those planks into sticks by placing them in a kind of vertical line like that. We're gonna make a few sticks like so. We've got eight planks and eight sticks and we're gonna make ourselves a pickaxe and an ax with those. Now, there are recipes for these, which are fairly straightforward. You just need two sticks there for a handle and three across the top will make you a pickaxe and a little kind of left R shape over there will make you an ax. It can also work the other way around if you place it like that. If you prefer to, that's totally fine. And that's an ax, we want a pickaxe as well. We need the ax for chopping down trees and the pickaxe for harvesting stone, there you go. Now you might be wondering how exactly I know these recipes. There's a couple of places you can find them. You can go to the Minecraft Wiki, which is a fantastic resource, has recipes for every single thing in the game that you can craft and tells you how to gather a bunch of resources. You've also got the recipe book in game here, which will actually show you the recipes for a bunch of stuff. Like even if you click on stuff that you can't actually craft right now, it will show you the recipe in the crafting table for how to make it. So the recipe book is really valuable and is an in-game way of finding out all the recipes if you don't want to go online looking for them. So now we've got our first tools, we can gather a little bit more wood and we can do that a little bit faster now that we've got an ax. We can also sprint around using the control key. <laughs> if you just tap the control key once, you'll be able to sprint or even I think if you double tap forward, I think that still allows you to sprint as well. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I wasn't entirely sure if that was going to work or not because I remember that working on the console edition of Minecraft, but I can never remember for certain if that's a thing on the PC as well, apparently it is. But I'm gonna go around gathering a little bit more wood from these trees. I'm also going to gather a little bit of stone from the side of this little hill here. And don't worry too much if you see blocks floating above you, unless it's sand or gravel or a couple of other blocks might be affected by gravity. Some of the, uh, the central blocks of the game, things like dirt and stone, are not affected by gravity. So they're never gonna fall on your head. <laughs> anyway, we're going to gather maybe about 20 stone. I think that's probably a good number to start off with. We just need a handful of stone here so that we can make a couple of very important things, including our first stone tools. Now, one of the other objectives we have right at the start here is finding a source of food. And as I raise my ax ominously in front of this pig, there's only one thing you know is gonna happen. We're gonna have to take the pig out. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> I'm sorry if you thought this was gonna be a vegetarian let's play, but unfortunately it's not. We have to eat at some point. And to do that, I'm gonna place eight cobblestone in a circle shape like so with a gap in the middle. That is going to make a furnace because we don't wanna eat raw pork, cho pork chops, we wanna eat cooked pork chops. And to do that, we're gonna place those in the top spot of the furnace right there. We're gonna place the remainder of our sticks in there and two sticks will cook one pork chop. It's a two to one kind of ratio thing. And there, there, are, there are different materials that will burn for different amounts of time. Sticks probably burn for the least amount of time, but that's fine, they're nice and easy to make and the wood is all around us. In fact, let me go over here and see if, oh, we got lucky, we got an apple, fantastic. Oak trees in this game will sometimes drop apples, but they will also drop saplings and saplings are useful for regrowing trees. You can place them down with a right click. And if there aren't a whole bunch of trees nearby, which thankfully there are at the start of our world here, but if there aren't that many, you can always clear out an area and place these saplings down, maybe a few blocks apart, just so they've got a little bit of room to grow and so that the leaves don't combine when the trees grow. And then the, those will eventually grow back just naturally. You don't have to worry about watering them or anything like that. They will just grow and you'll be able to harvest a little bit more wood and produce renewable wood that way. Fantastic, we have an apple, we have some pork. <laughs> we can, <laughs> If only we could make apple sauce to go with our pork chops, that'd be lovely, wouldn't it? That'd be a, a lovely, nice dinner. Now we're going to pick up the crafting table and pick up the furnace. I should also explain briefly that the different tools you have are better at mining different resources. So axes are better for chopping wood than a pickaxe will be. It's ever so slightly faster to mine stuff with an ax. And when it comes to materials like stone, you have to use a pickaxe. Because if I started trying to break this with an ax, for a start, it would break incredibly slowly, but also, 
when you end up breaking the block, which you eventually do, it doesn't drop any stone. So you really have to use the right tool to pick up certain resources like stone, like so. And thinking of the right tools, we probably need to start crafting stone tools because those will work a little bit faster than the wooden ones. They're a little bit more advanced. So we're gonna create a couple more sticks. We're going to turn this into a stone pickaxe like so. We're gonna grab that. And I think we may as well use a stone ax as well because those are going to be pretty handy. Now you'll notice that each of these has attack speed and attack damage. We'll get into that a little bit later on when we cover combat. But right now we are getting an upgrade to our tools. You can see the advancement up there in the top right hand corner and in the chat section of the screen is telling us that we've got an upgrade and we are working with much better tools. Now in the distance over here at the top of this mountain, I can see up there that there is a block that looks a little bit different from stone. It's got a couple of chunks of black stuff in it. That right there is coal and we need that a great deal because we need coal to make torches. We're going to need that to survive down here. I wonder, I wonder if, aha, there is some coal in this cave. There are also some monsters in the cave. So we have to be very, very careful not to attract the attention of the monsters just yet. Not until we've got some, some decent weapons. We could use the ax in a pinch and axes can be powerful in the right hands, but when the creepers spot you, you probably want to have a sword on you. I'm going to try and attack it with an axe anyway, just because I don't want to get attacked by anything. That was lucky. We pushed it down a hole. It should be fine. Hopefully, we can walk over here and gather this coal right here without the creeper messing with us too much. Fantastic. So we've got one coal. Coal is actually really useful right at the start of the game. So if you spot any, once you've got your wood or stone pickaxe, you should be able to mine it with either. Grab as much coal as you can because you will need it to make torches especially useful when night comes. Now, I think maybe down this cave here, we might encounter that creeper that we just knocked down the hole and he's not gonna be happy with me. But once we can turn this coal into some torches, we can put that with a stick like so and make four torches, which is a perfect number to start exploring one of these caves. And we can place the torches by right clicking. Yes, fantastic, we found some more coal. See, that's it, you take a risk, you get some rewards. This is the essence of survival Minecraft right here. You take a bit of a risk and you are rewarded with better resources, fantastic stuff. So I'm gonna gather all of this coal. It looks like we've got a huge amount over here, which is great. This will be perfect for us starting out. We'll be able to make all the torches we want. In fact, I'm not even going to gather all of this just because of how much there is, but I'll make a note of where this cave is and we should hopefully be able to return here later and gather a little bit more coal. Now you'll notice that the sun is starting to set over there, which means it's important now that we gather a little bit more wood and we start to make our first house. Our first house is really not gonna be anything special. You might have seen people build some very fancy houses in this game, and I think I've built some pretty fancy houses in my time, but we do not have time for that right now. Time is a wasting. If the sun gets low, then monsters might start to come out, and we want to avoid getting attacked by any monsters right away. So right over here in the center of this little basin we've got here, it seems like a perfect place to build a house. I'm gonna hold down the right click, or the left click button rather, and just clear out a section of this grass, remove the flowers and stuff so I've got a nice clear area to build. I'm not gonna be building a house this big, but at least we've got a little bit of space. I'm gonna turn all of these oak logs into oak planks. We've got a little bit of cobblestone as well if we want to, but I'm going to start the frame of a little house. We'll maybe make this thing like a five by five area in the middle. So we'll put five blocks around the outside like so. We don't have to worry too much about the corners and we get to bring it in like that. This is gonna be the foundation of a little house. I'm gonna to have to start placing this stuff a little bit quicker because I can see the light is fading a little bit. It's starting to get dark. Oh, goodness me. Okay, we're gonna be in trouble if I don't get this house built nice and quick. So do not worry, folks. I'm a professional. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Hopefully, we should be able to get a roof on this thing nice and quick. But as long as you've got walls up, then that means that monsters aren't going to be able to see you as easily, so that should be fine. We're gonna make a door for this really fast by popping down a crafting table. We'll use the recipe book because it's nice and quick, like so we can get ourselves some oak doors. There we go, fantastic. We have at least the framework of a house. Nothing should be able to come over these walls quite yet, but just in case it can, I'm going to take some of these oak planks and turn them into slabs, like so. This splits them up into a smaller, like half block like that, and those are really good for building ceilings right away. So what we've got here is essentially going to be a big wooden box, but you know what? It's going to do for the night. 
Now, once you've built one of these boxes, you should be pretty safe from anything. Oh gosh, I've run out of stuff. <laughs> Some of this is going to have to be built with cobblestone. Oh goodness, okay. Well, this is not a particularly attractive roof, <laughs> but it will do for now. We're going to pop a torch down in here. We're gonna pop a torch on the opposite wall as well. Oh look, we've got another, another slab there that I put down that we can probably fix the roof a little bit with. There we go, just one cobblestone slab. How about we make that one in the center. I'm getting a little bit picky about the look of this place already, which is <laughs> probably not a good thing for this series going forward. But there we go. We've got a stone block right in the center there. We could even put a couple more there if we wanted to. <laughs> and that is that is a house all complete. This is this is all you need to survive your first night in Minecraft. As long as you've got some food, you've got a little bit of wood that you can work with or some tools at least, and you've got a shelter to save yourself from all of the nasty creatures that are out there, you're gonna survive your first night in Minecraft this way. <laughs> I imagine you will, I hope you will. Good luck if you're trying this at home. Now I'm gonna make a few more torches while I'm here because one of the things you can do, especially if you've got a house with a little bit of extra floor space, is build yourself a shovel. We're gonna make some sticks like so. We're going to create a cobblestone shovel a stone shovel like so, and we are going to start making a staircase down because even during the night, even when you can't go out to the mountains because you're worried about the monsters in the fields around you, you can dig downwards. And sometimes you'll find caves. Usually you will just find a little bit of stone that you can dig into, but it's always possible to find resources down here below the surface. So we're gonna start a little spiral staircase here, making sure we light our way as we go because once you get a certain space away from an unlit area, if it's dark enough, monsters can spawn. So you've got to be careful about that kind of stuff and make sure you put your torches up. If it looks like it's getting dark around you, that means it probably is. So make sure you've got those torches on the wall every so often. You can also place torches down on the floor if you want to, but I like to place them on the walls, especially when I'm going caving, because when you're placing stuff, it actually acts as a a marker for where you've been and where you're going. And I kind of follow this rule that if you put your torches on the left-hand side, you follow them on the right to get back. So you, if you put them on the left, you're finding the right way back. That's the way I remember it anyway. I can't remember even where I heard that originally, but it's just one of those pieces of advice that has always stuck with me whenever I've played Minecraft. So here I am passing it on to you guys, and I hope you make good use of that. Now, there's even some more coal down here which is fantastic. It will be even better if we can find some iron. But as you can see from the subtitles in the bottom right hand corner, which I've got turned on just in case there's anybody who is hard of hearing, anyone who's hearing impaired watching this, and also so I can maybe hear if there are monsters around if I don't hear it in the sound effects from the game, there is a zombie around here somewhere and it might be down here in the cave with us. We don't know, but it's probably not in the little corridor that I've just mined out. So hopefully we should be okay. I might, if I get a little bit brave, I might dig towards the sound of that, but I would really like to find some iron before I do, because iron is used for making more interesting stuff. It's used for making iron uh, armor, and it's used for making shields, stuff that you can use to defend yourself. Ooh, there we go. We have come out into a cave, but what kind of cave is this? Is this a cave with monsters? Is this a friendly cave? I don't know. I can probably place a few blocks defensively here if we encounter something that we're not oh there he is there's our zombie okay well i'm gonna try and attack him with the axe i'm gonna take a little bit of damage here but there we go we got our first little achievement there for hunting monsters fantastic stuff now we're going to be placing torches like i said on the left hand side as we explore this and look at that we have found ourselves some iron ore fantastic that is precisely what i wanted to happen right here and maybe if you guys dug your hole in the same place you might be finding the same iron ore as well now this bit of cave looks a little bit more complicated to explore so i'm going to light that up just so nothing sneaks up on us and i'm going to head back over here to mine out this iron ore now i i often find that i end up placing torches on the blocks i want to mine so we're going to have to remove that torch and then probably replace it there just so it doesn't get too dark we're gonna grab all of this iron and there was even a little bit more iron further down the corridor over here. So don't worry, I haven't forgotten about this. I'm coming back for it. I just have to make sure that these areas over here are nice and lit up. Oh gosh, <laughs> it looks like we are reaching the limit of the amount of torches we have right now. There's plenty of coal over there that we could go and grab, but I don't wanna get greedy just now because often being greedy in Minecraft, like you're pushing your luck, you end up getting attacked by monsters and then sooner or later you'll end up 
getting exploded by a creeper or something like that. We don't want that to happen at this stage in our Let's Play right here. So I'm going to head back up to my little house where I put down the furnace and I can smelt some of this iron ore into iron ingots. And with that, I will be able to craft a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm looking forward to this. Right, let's get the iron ore in there. One piece of coal will smelt eight things. No matter what it is, if it's iron ore, if it's food, if it's wood that you want to turn into charcoal, which is a thing you can do, it will smelt eight things anytime. So that is, that is going to go in there and smelt eight of these blocks into iron ingots before it runs out and we end up having to put some more fuel in. So this will be very, very useful. Iron ingots will be essential and they are, <laughs> they are part of an advancement. We have acquired hardware. This is going to be very, very cool stuff. So as you can see right now, we're kind of running out of wood here. I have a stick, a couple of sticks. I don't have any wood planks on me anymore. I don't have any wood logs on me anymore because we use them all to make the walls of this house. Now, right now, I am not prepared to swap out the walls of this house for anything, <laughs> even though I have a little bit of more cobblestone now, which might be a better defense against the monsters, but I don't want to remove any of the planks in here. I, I kind of want some more wood, though. So we might have to venture out there and see if we can see if we can be brave and, and maybe we might even uh, run into a couple more monsters. Let's see. Let's see what's out there. Ooh, oh, okay. There's a couple of creepers over there. I'm going to place a few torches as I go because lighting up the area around your house can be a very good thing. Now, none of my trees have grown, which is a bit of a shame. I was hoping for some quick wood from some of those, but you never know. We should be able to find a couple of other things. Oh, hello. There's a zombie guy running at us. <laughs> Hopefully we should be able to deal with him. You'll see me occasionally jumping when I attack these guys. We're going to cover that in combat later, but that is how you do a critical hit in Minecraft. So that's possibly something worth keeping in mind for later. I see a couple of creepers over by those trees, and there's a skeleton over there underneath that tree. But you know what? I think we can take on a skeleton at this stage. I think we can rush in with the element of surprise, take him out, and hopefully get some wood from this tree. Hopefully I don't die in the process. There we go, fantastic. I can see a zombie running at us, that's fine. All we need is a little bit of wood from this birch tree. We can even leave some of the tree up and we can run back to our house. We've made it. <laughs> we've taken a little bit of damage, but we've done it. And I can eat myself a pork chop as a reward. And you'll notice that my health starts to refill there, which is wonderful news because I was running a little bit low on health there. <laughs> Didn't want to die right at the start of the series with you guys. But you'll notice as I've come in, I've shut the door behind me and the monsters can no longer find me. Now, zombies can occasionally knock down these doors if you're playing on harder difficulties. Right now, if we go into the options, you'll see I'm playing on normal difficulty, so we don't have anything to worry about right now. The, the zombie won't be able to knock down the door, and you'll notice that the sky outside is becoming lighter, and it's almost going to be daytime. Before that, though, before anything else, I do want to craft our first thing we're going to craft with these iron ingots, which is a shield. Now, I actually now craft a shield before any of the iron armor in the game, and the shield is basically essential. It's something that you can put in your left hand or your right hand if you play as a, a lefty in the game, and it will actually block oncoming attacks. It won't do that automatically. You have to hold down right click for it, but it is it is super useful. Now, some versions of Minecraft don't actually let you use shields properly yet because they haven't changed combat in the way that combat changed for the Java edition a little while ago. So maybe ignore the shield bit. If you can't make shields yet, maybe you might still be able to block with a sword. I'm not sure how it works on some of the other editions, but it's it, it's going to vary for, for various people. But personally, I can't live without a shield anymore. Shields are my first line of defense in the early days of survival Minecraft. So here we are, and the sky is blue again, the sun is rising over there, and you'll notice that the zombie that was outside has disappeared. That is because certain undead types of mobs, uh, monsters like skeletons and zombies, will burn in the sunlight. The things that won't burn in the sunlight are creepers, and you're probably familiar with creepers even if you haven't played Minecraft before, but just in case you haven't, I'm going to show you what these guys do. They explode. If you get too close to a creeper, if you don't run away in time or if you don't kill it in time, they explode and leave a giant hole in the landscape like that. And usually that will drop a bunch of the blocks that it destroyed, but sometimes those blocks get destroyed for good. So the thing you've got to worry about is letting creepers too near your house. It is not a good idea. But I've got a little bit of dirt here. I'm going to fill that in right here. And 
I will also explain in future episodes how I'm getting blocks in and out of my inventory so fast, because I have a couple of little tricks for doing that, which I'd love to share in a future episode, but I don't want to pack this episode too full of information and overwhelm you guys. I think we are just about close to wrapping this one up, so I want to save that for a future episode, but look at our lovely little house with our lovely little oak tree growing next to it. Isn't that just the perfect Minecraft image? <laughs> I think that is a beautiful start to a Minecraft world. I've taken a screenshot of it for today's thumbnail with the sun rising in the background and this is going to be our Minecraft survival guide world and I hope you guys have enjoyed this first episode don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you have and let me know in the comments if you're excited for this series because I really hope we can learn something together with you guys I'm really looking forward to sharing more of this and this is eventually going to become like a fully fledged let's play rather than being a tutorial thing from start to finish once we've got to the point where I think you guys are up to speed and you know everything we've covered so much of the stuff that you want me to cover in terms of tutorial content this is going to be my permanent single player Minecraft world and we will build out from here and have a big sprawling Minecraft world with loads of builds and loads of really fun stuff which I'm really looking forward to I'm also looking forward to exploring some of the update aquatic features in this world because we apparently have spawned nowhere near an ocean, <laughs> so we will get to see what the oceans do in future episodes of this Let's Play. But guys, once again, leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will see you guys soon. Bye for now.